Welcome back, troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglies Guitar Show. You might not know it, but Reverb actually offers some hand-picked collections right here. They don't really advertise these as much as they used to when they first came out, but I find the easiest way to do it is to go to Google, type in Reverb Collections in order to find these, just in case you want to browse some interesting guitars. So I thought I would take a look at one or two of these and kind of react to them today. And the one that really spoke to me, Outrageous Guitar Finishes. Oh my, <laughs> they weren't kidding here. That's the first one that speaks to me. We've got a Fishbone SpongeBob 2. That, that's a fun guitar right here. <laughs> With the whole SpongeBob meme culture and everything, this is just, it's kind of a beautiful guitar in my opinion. Seems to be pretty simple here, just a standard basic style bridge with a bridge humbucker, master volume, master tone, with just a bunch of SpongeBob's on it. I could see somebody having a lot of fun with that thing. That looks great in that professional studio photography right there. Oh wow, only 179.10? That is unbelievable. I feel like something like this might get views on YouTube, but <laughs> not today. Going on next here is the Batman Bolin guitar. I actually have a separate rocker not for this one. And these guitars were also on Pawn Stars. But what I'm noticing here is our little red button that makes the Joker laugh is not present. Who's going to want that guitar if it doesn't laugh at you? Or is it there? I can't tell. I thought there used to be a red button. It looks like we've also got the Batman guitars. I always thought this would be like a Phil X type of guitar. I'm not a big fan of blood splatter paint jobs, so I'm not going to bother with that one. That's a very iconic Eric Clapton, The Fool. I'm surprised that Gibson has not done a limited edition release of this guitar. I know Fender just recently did Rocky, so I would imagine eventually Gibson will have to do a limited run of this guitar. And I can guarantee you, it will not be cheap. Uh, the Kramer Gorky Park. I actually have a separate video on one of those as well. That might have been how I found that one in the uh, Bolin guitar, because those are like the same listings from a couple of years ago. This is interesting. 1973 Gibson Les Paul Custom Ebony with Custom Artwork. Hmm. You know, sometimes custom artwork can be rather strange on a guitar. This is still strange. It's kind of got this alien vibe going on for it. But yet the artwork was done tastefully enough. You even have a nice artist signature right there in a nice location. And they left the back alone. It looks like they have some uh, cheap Schaller tuners on here. Cool yin yang symbol. Oh, I didn't even realize there's a dragon there. Four and a half thousand dollars is going to get you a very clean 1973. I don't think I'd pay a premium for it, but if the price was right, I wouldn't mind it. The Zebra Flying V, still there. <laughs> oh, that's cool. A Domo guitar. I'll be honest, I do not know a lot about Domo. I just know that my uh, friend's sister liked it at one point in time. And he's just kind of a cool guy. It seems like it's a kind of a cheaper Stratocaster that somebody just made a custom pick guard for. That wouldn't be too hard to make yourself, I wouldn't imagine. Kind of reminds me of the, the Hello Kitty style Stratocasters, but anybody could make that. Yeah, they just made it out of a Squire Bullet. How much is it? 200 bucks. You know, if you're not skilled in the art sense and stuff, I don't think that's that bad of a price. What else do we got going on? Ooh, Fender Custom Shop F-Hole Stratocaster. I really, really like this guitar. The Paisley finish, you either love it or you don't, but I, I'm not even seeing that. All I see is the F-hole and two P90 pickups in a Stratocaster format. There's something about this that reminds me of that Jazz Telly. I like the way that they've kind of slightly aged this one as well, and the fact it's a semi-hollow Stratocaster, I've yet to try one of those. That's kind of a cool guitar. I would put that in my collection, but seven and a half thousand dollars, I think I'll pass on that one. Oh, wow. Gibson Zach Wilde Buzzsaw SGV. I'm surprised to find this in this exotic collection because this is kind of a production run and Zach Wilde does a very similar thing on his own run of guitars. I actually own an artist proof of this guitar, so we will see a full review and demo in the future. But they only made 50 in the production run of these, and it was the last cooperation with Gibson and Zach Wilde. Which, I mean, I think if we're being honest here, he was kind of making them do some crazy stuff. Maybe that was for the better. The Bowling Ball series is cool. That's very pricey for that one. What happened here? So it's a Fender Coronado. Something happened with the finish. Okay, so it's a Coronado 12, but 
just know if you ever get a 12 string and you don't want it to be a 12 string, just take half the tuners off. <laughs> it still works in a roundabout way anyways. Fender Villager. I'm not familiar with that title. Is that what they call the 12 string variations? Maybe there's more history that I don't know. This one's kind of interesting. I like the paint scheme. It's maybe not the, the prettiest guitar in the world. It just kind of looks like a homemade job, not 100% professional, but look at that. Nice figuring on that neck. I'm not normally a fan of bird's eye, but you know, sometimes it looks all right, but that's a goofy looking headstock. Oh, now we're getting into the freaky guitars. So everybody knows about the Axe guitar from Gene Simmons, but I, I, I didn't know there was a custom painted demon head guy version. <laughs> that is quite the statement piece to say the least. Whoever made this list definitely thinks Paisley's strange. I don't think Paisley's that strange. Now that is strange. Not only do you have a crazy body shape, but you also have a crazy finish. This has Rick Nielsen's name all over it. Speaking of which, I still have not been able to get a hold of them, even though I had some pretty good leads as to people who might be able to get me in touch with them. So I just might have to make the Aldo Nova Les Paul video without corresponding with him first, which kind of stinks because I can't confirm nor deny the rumors. But honestly, if I was Rick Nielsen, I wouldn't want to make those rumors go away if they weren't true, because it's just kind of a cool lore behind that model. I like this lava swirl. It just kind of reminds me of an ash body that's gone slightly psychedelic. That's the problem with like paint swirl jobs is you never know what you're going to get out of it. That's with the, the dunking method. I don't know if that's what they used here. They probably did some sort of swirl and then the droplets and that's kind of how they get all this stuff. But that's nice. That's by Reverend. Ooh, here's a steampunk guitar. I like steampunk guitars, but they're not always done well. Like this one... Not my favorite. One of my biggest regrets in my whole guitar career is not buying this guitar. It was sent to me about a year ago, like when I was doing the Trade Tuesday series, and the guy had wanted $600 for it. And I just wasn't sure if somebody was going to pay that much or not. But, you know, in retrospect, if somebody was offering this to me for $600 today, it would be an instant yes, because I think it's definitely worth more than that. This guy, he has a vision. But I was just kind of unsure of what the bass guitar was itself. I mean, the headstock was a little bit goofy, but I guess it started life as like a DBZ brand guitar. So it used to look like this. And I've reached out to this guy several times trying to buy it since. And I, I don't know if his email's not active or what's going on, but I've never heard from him again. But he called this one Christine, and I would have loved to have demoed that guitar. Because he put an old tube in here and he says it even lights up and it makes sounds. So you look at this one and then you look at this and I think you guys can see what I mean. Not all steampunk guitars are created equal. This just kind of looks like a slop job in my opinion. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't mean to offend anybody. I do like the use of this though. That's kind of interesting how it goes from the top into the bottom of the instrument. Let's go ahead and take a look at a few more Stereotypical flag guitars, art guitars, everything in between guitars. I kind of like this. It's got like a sonar vibe to it. And th th this is kind of interesting. <laughs> oh, here's another steampunk. That's something else I really like about the whole steampunk vibe. I love it when they chop parts of the guitar off and like join it together with metal bits. This one's not quite as cool as Christine, but it's definitely one I would potentially be interested in. I like his hat that he's put in there for a little demonstration there. The thing that would sell this one for me is if it had a little bit more of a rustic paint job with some darker colors to it. And if the gears actually moved. So you get all this weird stuff and then you get just a regular green burst. I was going to make a separate rock or not about this Birdland that was custom ordered in green burst. But it, it's still saved in my list. Maybe I'll do it one day, but it's kind of been shared around a lot. So maybe not. I guess we'll end it with this one. <laughs> I like it. It's, you, you know, a Fender amp on top of a Telecaster. What's not to love here? I feel like Fender could like legitimately market the amp series guitars and like actually have an amp built into it. Because they've got all that modeling stuff, instead of, you know, having a cabinet and whatnot, why not build it directly into the guitar? That would be 
interesting because I think they could do it now that everything's just down to a circuit board. And to get around the whole speaker issue, they could Bluetooth it and build the speaker into the case, kind of like they did those old vintage ones. It would kind of become like an instant collectible thing, but, but it wouldn't be like a highly sought after thing or anything. But I think we'll call it quits here. I hope you enjoyed looking at these kind of strange guitars tonight, and we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.